10 things I hate about Direction Waveform. Number one, the keyboard shortcuts. Now some of them are fine, um, like press M for mixer, okay. Press W to return to the start of the track, maybe. I think in some uh, setups, uh, pressing enter and stuff brings it back to the start. Pressing Q to turn on and off, snap to grid. That one's weird. G is what it could be. But when you press G, what you do is it enters um, a clip into your track. F is the thing that you turn that you hit if you want to turn on and off various devices, various plugins that you've got over on the right hand side. F. Best I can do is to just put them into my head by thinking, right, G for putting a, a, a clip into there. Just go there. F. If you want to turn something off, F off. And then if you want to turn it back on again, F back on again. W. Ooh. I don't know. Number two, the GUI looks kind of old to me. I don't know. Something about it is just uh, looks a bit homemade as well somehow. But some people love it. And then talking about the GUI, sometimes the plugins render a bit strangely where you have to drag the bottom corner to make it change. Every three. It crashes regularly. Sometimes even hourly, depending on what you're doing. It's quite annoying. Number four, no LV2 support. And when you use Linux, LV2 is there and you want to have access to all your plugins. But, oh well. But there is a workaround though, I think. I believe you can use Carla or something, which is fine. Number five, the price of their Extreme package. Waveform Pro Extreme is a lot. $749. Now standard, on the other hand, at $259 is not so bad. It's good value, in fact. Or if your budget is tight, the basic package is $119. That's pretty good. Or if you're a student, you get 50% off, which is very reasonable. Or if you're a teacher, a music teacher at any kind of institution, you get the whole thing for free for any amount of machines that you've got in your school. And I think that's incredible. I mean, that's far beyond what most DAWs are offering. Number six, the included loops. I'm not a big fan. There seem to be a lot of the same sort of thing over and over. To my ears, anyway. I'm not saying it's a deal breaker, but they're not terrible. But some DAWs have selection that I find more appealing. Number seven, the download process is laborious. On Linux, I have to download each thing and then I have to unpack them and drag every separate thing into its folder using sudo commands. That's annoying. And even, even the instruments and samples and stuff, I have to drag the folders into the folder that they need to go into. Not automated. Now, having said that, Traction say that they only support Ubuntu, and if that's the case, maybe in Ubuntu you can do it. I must give it a go sometime. Maybe it automates things. Number eight. I can't find any way to go to numbers before the first bar. And for songs that start with an upbeat, and there are plenty of songs that start on an upbeat or anacrusis, sometimes you want the first beat to be on the first beat of the first bar. And you want the introduction to come a little bit before that. That's something that you can do in other DAWs, in some other DAWs at least. I'd like to see that function. So Traction, if you're listening, maybe sort that one out for us, please. Number nine. So many of the features are kind of hidden from you until you read the manual or watch a video about them. For example, I wanted to automate some things and I had to figure it out. I had to go and read the manual and find out that way to, how to do it instead of just doing the intuitive thing, which most people do, let's face it, when they use a DAW. We like to just feel our way through and be able to work stuff out. But the unintuitive, there's an A in the far right-hand corner, and you click on that, and that's your automation menus, instead of all being down at the bottom, where you'd expect everything to be in this DAW. Anyway, I mean, once you do figure it out, it's no big deal. Likewise, dropping a loop in, it doesn't automatically go to the, the correct time values against the grid, but until you learn how to click the right buttons and stuff like that. I'll do some videos about that though, because once you know how, it's not hard. And number 10, the manual, although it's really, really good, it's not quite as comprehensive as I'd like. There's an awful lot of features in this program that could really benefit from more elaboration and from some examples. The rack is one particular area that I'd like to see a lot more detail about. And yeah, also VCA tracks and grouping tracks in different ways. That, that'd be good to have more, more detail about how, the, how all that stuff works. But having said all of that, Traction Waveform is an incredible DAW. I'd highly recommend it.
That's my stance on it anyway. I'm going to continue using it. It's got a lot of great functions. And I've spent the last couple of months really working it out and really digging into the manual and really digging into watching a whole lot of videos from Traction and other people. And I gotta say, it's got a really, really, really nice workflow once you get into it. I feel I might do an awful lot more work on it. So Shinny, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of that. And if there's any particular feature out of that that you want to see more of, stick it down there and uh, leave a comment. Give me your feedback. Give me your details. What it is it you'd like to know more about? And I'd be happy to do videos on all sorts of things to do with Traction Waveform. My name is Breno Ruig, and this is Lismore Music. Sloan Gafogel.